The Ribos Operation kicks off Season 16, otherwise known as The Key to Time. This is the first time the show has attempted something resembling a season arc, or really any narrative tissue of this kind, as a means of structuring all the stories for the year. And throughout the serial, there was always a clear end goal, which is to collect the segment of The Key to Time located on Ribos. Now, of the four parts of this story, the first is definitely my favorite, because it just does so much right. The two most important things that have to be done are the introduction of the season-long arc, as well as the new companion in the form of Romana. And I think they do a great job of that. This takes up the first 10 or so minutes of the story, and it's thoroughly captivating throughout. I like how we start with a quite normal scene between the Doctor and K-9 Mark II, because it is fun to watch, but also that sets up this great contrast when the tone completely switches as the lights in the TARDIS fade away and the doors blast open to reveal this overwhelming golden light. This leads into the exposition scene, which is rather engaging because it has some nice comedic moments sprinkled throughout, as well as some just cleverly written dialogue. Like when the Doctor asks what happens if he refuses to pursue the six segments of The Key to Time. Ah, you want me to volunteer, isn't that it? Precisely. And if I don't? Nothing. Nothing? You mean nothing will happen to me? Nothing at all. Ever. It's such a simple moment, but I just really like it. And make no mistake, this sequence between the Doctor and the White Guardian is definitely exposition heavy. They are taking a little bit of time to set up the purpose of this quest he has to go on, and rightly so, because it determines the remainder of these six serials, not just this one. But I never found it to be boring, and thought they did a really good job of setting this story arc up and balancing having an entertaining scene while getting the audience the information that they need to know. Equally important is the introduction of the fourth Doctor's fifth ever companion, Romana. Now, this is pulled off really well because unlike anybody else that he's traveled with, Romana is somebody that he has not specifically chosen to be with, and you can start to see him be much more insecure than he's been with the others, and it's immediately such a different dynamic while still being incredibly engaging and a lot of fun, just in a slightly different way to what we've seen before. My name is Ramana Dvaratna Lunda. I'm so sorry about that. Is there anything we can do? The Doctor is undeniably rude to Ramana, but it's just so much fun, and the more they spend time together, the better they get along. Even though you can still, by the end of this one, see that they're not best friends, they are able to work well with each other to get things done, and have some quite fun moments throughout this thing. Because of the dynamic they are going for this time around, it is only natural that the Doctor is going to be a little bit less likable than normal because he's not as charming and friendly and kind as he was with Sarah Jane. He's definitely rude to Romana, as I said, but it's usually done with some sort of a comedic twist to it, and those moments are intended to be entertaining, so it's not that he's unlikable, he's just a bit of an ass at times. But he also has his moments of kind-heartedness that feel very fitting with what we've come to know about the fourth Doctor, and I do legitimately enjoy him throughout this story. Not only does Romana have a great introduction to the show and dynamic with this Doctor, but she's also just a legitimately strong companion right from the start. We do finally get to see a female Time Lord who isn't a teenager, and what a great character. She's rather young for a Time Lord and thus less experienced than the Doctor, but she's still really smart and picks things up quite quickly, and feels very much like an equal to the Doctor in a way that no companion really has. She also has this very regal quality about her. You can tell she's a different breed of Time Lord from the Doctor, and I love seeing the ways in which they differ. She's honestly just really good here, and I look forward to discussing these two throughout the rest of the season. Getting to the story itself, it is pretty solid. This backbone of a story arc direction to guide everything and our two strong leads definitely help to make what could have been a somewhat average serial rather entertaining. Four parts long feels like just about the right length for this one. It's paced well and moves through the story at a good speed, giving you time to get invested in everything and immersed in the setting. 
it's sort of a pseudo historical in the sense that it's not actually a historical set story, but takes place on Rybos, which in many ways feels similar to Earth history. So the juxtaposition of having people talking about selling planets while they're dressed in historical clothing is pretty neat. There's nothing super original about most of this one. It's a relatively standard story, but I do think it's well executed and entertaining. I do actually like a couple of the supporting characters in here. There are a couple of swindlers who get mixed up in everything going on, and it's fun to see them get uh, in a bit over their heads. They're definitely rather over the top and relatively cheesy, but I still found them to add to the more fun tone of this story and enjoyed their presence, particularly the times where you could see them pushing their grift a bit too far and getting a bit too greedy. It's not that they were fantastic, but they just added value to the serial on the whole. Also, the soundtrack in this one kind of slaps. Like the note. I do have somewhat of a confession to make with regards to my relationship with this story, and that is that this is the first Doctor Who story I ever saw, I think? There's a chance it was the 11th hour, but it was very long ago, so I'm not completely sure, and even if it wasn't my very first Doctor Who serial, which I think it was, it was at the very least my first classic Doctor Who story. My sister introduced me to the show with The Key to Time some 10 or 11 years ago, and I remember really enjoying Doctor Who, especially the fourth Doctor, and naturally, The Ribos Operation was the first serial from season 16, and thus the first one I watched, so I think naturally I do have a bit of a fondness for this one and the season on the whole, because they do comprise my very earliest memories of Doctor Who. I don't have a lot to add about this, but it is something I wanted to mention, and I am going to be doing my best not to look at this one with rose-tinted glasses and actually go over the good and the bad of the serial, which I think I have been able to do. The thing that was probably the weakest for me about this story were the villains. There were two, one primary villain and one secondary, and while neither were good, the main foe in the form of Graf Ben Decay, he's definitely a bit much for me. The story does have some quite over-the-top performances and characters, but I think he just took it too far. This shouting villain that continuously yelled at everyone around him was a little much and failed to make for a compelling threat. I guess he could have been worse, but for me he just added so little to the story and did lessen my enjoyment of it a little bit, though he didn't ruin it by any means. I was able to still have fun with the good aspects of this serial, but you're definitely not coming here for its villains, or at least I'm not. There are some relatively minor things in here that aren't great as well, like how obvious it is that Romana could be spotted by the guards that are looking around. Unless this guy was literally blind, she would have been basically impossible to miss. And that's like such a classic Doctor Who thing that's happened so many times, but it's hard to not be a little bit infuriated by it because it's, it's fixable and it's just kind of a dumb thing to be in there. And there are some little things like that which do on occasion ever so slightly lessen the overall quality of this serial, but there's nothing else too major that brings this one down. It's generally insignificant problems that don't amount to all that much on the whole. At this point, I would like to give you a spoiler warning for this serial. I don't have many things to go over, but if you want to avoid spoilers, you can skip to the point in this video that is shown on screen, and if you're sticking with me, then let's keep discussing this story. One of the things I enjoyed about the conclusion of this was the way the Doctor killed Graf Vindicke, because that character had intended to kill one of his own guards, but through some sleight of hand, our lead places the bomb on the villain, effectively making him kill himself, as opposed to one of his men, or as it would be, the Doctor. And this is always one of my favorite ways for the Doctor to kill someone, because their fate is a direct result of their actions, unbeknownst to them. It's like instant karma. They intended to harm someone else, and instead directly harm themselves. I think it's quite clever as a way to have the villains killed off, and I like when it's handled this way, because it's just that one step removed from the Doctor killing the villain, making it not quite 
as villainous of our main character to do it, and I think it works really well when a villain's death is handled this way, but I don't think they overplay it. So when it happens like this, it just it just feels a little bit sweet, and even though it's obviously still messed up, it I don't know, it just feels right. Overall, I found this story to be a really engaging and entertaining ride that successfully and elegantly did the important jobs of both introducing the season arc for the show, as well as the Doctor's new companion, Romana. I think this duo has an incredibly unique dynamic that stands out from everything we've gotten before, and K-9 adds a nice quality to the scenes he is in as well. Though the villains are subpar and the story is largely standard, this one is made so fun and enjoyable because of our main characters and how entertaining it is to watch them on screen. And also on the whole, it's just well presented and captivating. I had a really good time with this story, and I am going to give The Ribos Operation a rating of 7.75 out of 10. And that does it for now, everybody. If you have any thoughts on this one, then feel free to leave them down below. And I do hope to see you around on some upcoming Sunday in the future, hopefully soon for a review of The Pirate Planet. And if not, that is absolutely fine, so long as you know that I appreciate your time here today. And with that said, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and have a lovely week.